Well, hello, y'all. It's Kyle Kyle's Tracks and Travis. Today, we're just fooling around basically in the backyard right next to the house. But we're going to be making our quick deploy ridge lines, what we're going to be doing. There's other videos on this, but I just want to show you my version of it. Here's what we're going to do. First, we need a bowling knot. So I'll come over here. I can teach how to wrap it. It's like that. Stays pretty good. Let me pull some more out here. First thing you want to do is you got the short end, you got the long end. If you want this, it's considered a bite, not a loop. We're going to make a loop. I'm going to actually do it right here. Or, yeah, right about right here. And we're going to do this. Now we got a loop. I'm going to make this a little bigger here. And we're going to do this. Lay it on top. Just like that, on top of that line. Make that, they say Arby's hat. Make the Arby's hat. I take this in, still a short end, long and dry here holding that, from your chest. Pay attention now. It's coming from my chest. It's going to be your chest. So pretend my chest is your chest. From your chest through here. And what you do is you take it around this part right here. You pinch it. See how it's pinched together? All we're going to do now is pull it all together and it turns right into a bowling. Maybe tighten it up a little bit. There, we got ourselves a bowling. Now I'm going to show you guys the quick way instead of taking the way through here of how we're going to do this. And I'll get back with you. Alright, show you this quick release I had learned not too long ago. Well, actually it has been a while ago. I think I showed it in previous videos, but I'm going to go ahead and show it again. As yes, I'm kind of tangled up here. But I can drop this and still have this. It is starting to come a little bit unraveled though. I got tangled up some, so we'll do this. See, I got the bowling right here. I'm going to kind of go this way. We made a pocket. My fingers are kind of going away. Right in my fingers is that pocket. It's almost like the modern spy kitchen when you do it like this. Actually, it is basically the modern spy kitchen. Take that stick. Stick it through. Tighten it up. Let me show you how you pull the stick out. Now, if it's not a smooth stick, you might have some problems there. But take it out, and it comes right off. And i got to pay attention to what's down. I'm getting tangled up with things. That's how that works. So let me tie it again. Probably find better toggles than I just found, but that's what I found. Alright, I am coming undone here. I'm going to turn you around. Actually, no, I'm not. Hold on, man. We're just going to walk out. You can walk this out like this. Kind of far away from this. Just let me show you like this. You can take this, but it did kind of come unravel on me. Got hung up down there. And there, there you go. Just watch this part because that's how I had hit, hitched on there. You can already undo the knot, or you can just like this. I'll get back with you guys on the next knot. Next knot I like to use. Is a trucker hitch, or in my case, the locking trucker hitch, or so I've heard people call it modified trucker hitch. You take it, and you're wanting the loop here. And usually, and what I forgot to mention, you want your cordage about your paracord, or wherever you're using, about 25 feet. That's all you should need. There we go. I was about hung up there. So this is more than enough because I'm not quite 25 feet apart from that wood you just saw to the tree. You take your hand. I'm going to go about right here. You do that. You lay that loop on top. Towards the tree. See what I got? I got that loop. It comes undone real easy. Sometimes you got to tuck harder than that. I got lucky. Alright, again. I'll try to keep this on my phone. Just take your hand. Just like that. Twist your hand. You got that loop now. Put it on top of the line and pull it towards the tree. 
So like that. Now mine's a little bit. I'm gonna adjust you guys. I'll well, I'll adjust you guys now. So I can get that line just a little bit further out of the way here. Let me find some even ground. Well, it's fun around here trying to find flat ground in the backyard. But I don't want that that close. The reason I don't want it that close is it will go right up against that tree. So let me pick a spot that's not right on up against the tree. Well, you get to watch this for a third time. Right here, your hand, that, pull it towards the tree. Now what we'll do is we'll stick. For those with the hand grip, I just really have to do, my cordage is longer than necessary for this particular project. And the reason I'm using grains, this is going to be my ridge line. So I have planned next. You can pull it. Now I've got this loop. Let's see if I can drag in close so you can see it a little bit better here. Now that I got it the way I want it. There we go. And you see I got this loop here. All I did was run my course there once. In fact, I can do it again to show you. Take it out of there. There's my loop I made. Pit through this loop. Oop, I dropped it. My line's a little bit long. Like I said, I'm making this for me. Use later. Back on my phone here. Get right there. There we go. There's my loop. I'm not going to grab the end so it'll be easier. Yeah, I got way too much cordage for this area. But you really do want 25 feet. I'm a little bit more than 25 because I did it by arm length. I pulled it. Five arm lengths, so that makes about 25 on 5 left. So I got a little bit more than that. There we go. Trying to keep it on my phone here, but just keep pulling. Sure, I'm not tangled up with nothing. Now I got it with my. Sure, I'm not twisted. That's another thing. Make sure you're not twisted. Now you can pull on this sucker, and you're getting tension. Now you can try to squeeze this, or maybe right here. That's it. That's the problem I have. Now you can try to make. And it still kind of came undone. So instead of doing that, what I like to do, this is what I call a locking. Come back here. Make sure I'm not completely messed up here. Back forth with it a little bit. And you want to go back through. Make sure I'm actually going back through here. Yeah. Take it. And just take it back through. And you don't have to be in a rush. That's always a bad idea to be in a rush when you're doing this. You end up knots that you don't want. Been there, done that. Now, my best guy here is a barrel. It's going right to there. That way you guys see that. But I got one, two right there. And all I got to do is pull this sucker. I don't have to sit here and hold it. And this doesn't do it. Just like that. Just like you would normal trucker's hitch. Now I'm going to re-thread through here because I did that. And we'll go on with the other. So I'll be right back with you. Alright, we're back. I kind of got down without something on the ground. Something else just to do. Pay attention to what's around you. Try not to stand in what course. You're going to have extra if you're in a spot like I am. Or some thorns down there. I can pull this as tight as I want. That's as tight as I really need because all we're doing now is making a ridge. I'm not building shelter or nothing. Then you can just take it, wrap it up your hand. I don't usually do any other knots, I just stick it right here. That way. 
It's already squeezing, and I can just get through it. There we go. And that's how that's going to look. Easy to get out of these gonna do. Now we got to do persistent knots. I'll get back with you. All right. Let's get this persistent knot tied. Now I'm not tying no knot, nothing that I usually do when I tie a persistent knot for a reason. For directing a quick deploy rigger, that means I don't want to look on the ground for toggles. I got toggles on me, and that's how we're going to do it. All I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to even this up a little bit more here. I'll try to. I'm hoping I can cut this too short. There we go. It's even. You take it. Get that. This. You do that. You just take this part. And when I do that, that makes a lark head. One. Two. Makes persistic. Trying to mess up too much here. Two. Three. And kind of dress those up while you're doing this. Of course, you can also dress them up as you're going. So we'll cross over that one. Hey, Abel. And I got a dog barker above my head. She heard you talking. She's like, why aren't you talking to me? I'm Mabel. Well, you're barking on something out there. I have some deer back that way. That's why. Three of them. Yeah, Mabel. You want to go chase the deer? Of course, that means I got to go chase you, too. Alright, so, this is kind of long, I will admit to it. The reason it being that long is I want to tie this on here. That's just going to be a regular knot. And hopefully I didn't cut this too short. And I'll get back with you. This is going to be a regular knot, but it's giving me problems because of how short this is. I'll get back with you. All right, make sure you leave yourself plenty of towel here to tie that on there. I didn't have too much stick with it. You'll see on these. All right, I got plenty of tail in. I gotta cut these off or leave them. That don't matter to me. I'm not after pre, I'm after functional. Now you notice how I did that. You also notice that I can't take it nowhere is when I do that. I tie that tarp on there. And use these. Now this one's longer than that one. Well, not by much. This will be on one end of the tarp. I got another one down here. That's one end of the tarp too. And again, I almost didn't leave myself enough tail on this one. It didn't tie it on there, but I managed. So I can cut these off if I want. The tail, anyways. Not the knot. And you can tie where you want here, a lantern, light, or have something hang somewhere. Like I said, you just, and they ain't going nowhere. Make sure what you're using for tie is going to be strong so it don't break, so when you go tighten it, you don't have it. I did that once. This one's kind of thin, but I don't plan on really pitting a tarp on this part. I just plan on hanging it. I have this part going now. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to do this. Let's undo it on camera, and I'll show you what happened here. You notice that cordage I had, it fell out while I was messing with this. It's not that big of a deal if it falls out. You can tie another half hitch. To keep from doing that, you just... Of course, I had a feeling to probably do that even with the half hitch. This cordage is kind of long for this area. And see, you went to half hitch. I mean, so yeah. I thought this go through here so I don't have to mess with it. If it falls out, it falls out. If this doesn't do this, all I gotta do is pull. Now, I pulled so don't jerk it. I did that once. I jerked it and ended up with this knot. I had me a hell of a mess. Very slowly, pull on it. And very slowly, this doesn't do it. Now, we don't end up with a mess. Comes out just like that. I'll tell you something I should have done before I did that. I should have screwed those up. Though. They should be fine where they're at. I'll get back with you. See what I forgot to do? Is I needed to scoot those persistence up just a little bit. 
before I start taking this down and rolling this up. But I can just take it out of this loop. Like that. This loop that's right here, just grab it. And get you on camera here. Let me twist you a little bit. There we go. The loop should just. There. No loop. Almost like a magic trick. Let me get you guys up here. Alright, you see the way I got these? I don't want them way up here to put on where I'm wrapped up against. If you wrap, put these too far up there, they'll be in the way. And then you're kind of having to move them down as you're trying to get that pocket. So I was going to just take this out. There we go. Then, let me turn you a little bit. Actually, I'll be right back with you instead of doing all that. Alright, now that we got the ridge line down, I'm going to go ahead and scoot these up just a little bit more. Maybe right about there. And depending on the tree, see that's the problem. I may have screwed them up a little bit too far. I get on that tree, that's going to be in the way. Maybe I'll screw them back down here. But now I got toggles on there. At least I don't have to go look for a toggle. I may have to look for a toggle on this end when I go to make that pocket. But at least I'm not having to work on more toggles. And these don't have to be that neat. At the same time, you don't want sharp edges. There's no sharp edges on mine. Oh, except maybe right there. <laughs> Alright, now there's no sharp edges. Where's that sharp edge? There we go. Now you just take it. You lay it down like that. That way you can just pull it out and you make that pocket. A little bit more like that. And then you just take it. And as you get better with this, you should be able to do it faster than I'm doing it. You just figure eight it. It's just a little bit slower here. Just figure eight it. That's all you got to do. And this can be part of my shelter kit. So I still have a backpack test that I redid it from the green bag back to the Pathfinder backpack to try to, I wasn't paying attention. Um, hold on a minute. I'm going to wrap this somewhat. Alright. About like, I kind of got part of touching the ground. I reach back here. I put my thumb back behind here. That way it'll come off me easily. There we go. You just take it now. All you have to do is just wrap it around here. Just like this. Now I may have to undo this all on a minute because I think I got too much. We'll find out as a row. If you have to, you can actually push this up a little bit. There we go. And it doesn't have to be neat neat. It may all go over towards the end here. See, I almost got too much. I'm pulling that a little bit more. Like I say, you can almost, if you do that, if you get too much, you can kind of get up there a little bit more. Try not to get that much. I just come towards the end, so I'm getting there. Just take this in. And just pull that through. After I've stuck my fingers there. So I got that. I'm going to pull that through. It makes that half hitch. And depending on how much I left myself with. Which I did. I can put my finger there. And I'll turn to a clove hitch. Oh, you don't have such a long tail hanging from there. There. Now we got a clove hitch. So all you have to do now is pull a little bit out, make that pocket stick toggle through, and you should just be able to walk with it. We'll find out as we go, because I never actually left one of the toggles on before. I think we'll be fine. And then I can throw it around, do whatever I want, have it hang from here, 
you may have to undo this before you run with it, or you can leave it as is and run with it, and then you may have to, like you saw in the first, you should tell me undo kind of a knot that wasn't really a knot, wasn't tight. Other than that, works just fine. Anyways, this is Kyle Cow's Traps and Trails. Oh, hold on, let me show you something. I brought my bag with me, my haversack. All I gotta do is drop it in there. Now I can reach in. No mess, no tangles. Anyways, it's Kyle Cow's Traps and Trails. If you like what you see, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to me, hit the all notifications bell, and of course comment. I do appreciate the comments, so I'll learn off of each other. And I do appreciate y'all watching, and let's make sure we share this video out. And like I said, I do really do appreciate y'all's watching. Without you guys, there wouldn't be no community, there wouldn't be none of this going on. So you guys just keep on tuning in, keep watching my videos, and recommend it to your friends and whatnot. Anyways, bye-bye, I'm out of here. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.